Interstate 70 runs from Baltimore, Maryland to Cove Fort, Utah. Beginning in April 1992, the highway has lent its name to a serial killer known as the Interstate 70 Killer, who has committed a string of murders within a few miles of it in several Midwestern states. His victims were usually young, petite, brunette women. One of the victims was a man, but it is believed that he was mistaken for a woman by the killer as he often wore a ponytail. All of the stores attacked were specialty stores and were usually only robbed of a few hundred dollars. He is also suspected of shooting three more store clerks in Texas during 1993 and 1994, one of whom survived. The murders were conclusively linked after a St. Charles detective suspected a connection. All of the murders were committed with a .22 caliber firearm. Aside from the Wichita murders, all the victims were alone while murdered and shot in the back of the head. None of the scenes had any signs of sexual assault and while all stores were robbed, robbery appeared to be a secondary motive as all the stores were small specialty stores. Which would not have had as much money as some of the larger stores. Jack the Ripper terrorized London in 1888, killing at least five women and mutilating their bodies in an unusual manner, indicating that the killer had a substantial knowledge of human anatomy. Jack the Ripper didn't just snuff out life with a knife, he mutilated and disemboweled women, removing organs such as kidneys and uteruses, and his crimes seemed to portray an abhorrence for the entire female gender. All five killings attributed to Jack the Ripper took place within a mile of each other. In or near the Whitechapel district of London's East End, from August 7 to September 10, 1888. Several other murders occurring around that time period have also been investigated as the work of Leather Apron, another nickname given to the murderer. The ongoing case, which has spawned an industry of books, films, TV series and historical tours, has met with a number of hindrances, including lack of evidence, a gamut of misinformation and false testimony, and tight regulations by the Scotland Yard. The name, Jack the Ripper, originated in a letter written by someone claiming to be the murderer that was disseminated in the media. The letter is widely believed to have been a hoax and may have been written by journalists in an attempt to heighten interest in the story and increase their newspaper circulation. Between 2005 and 2009, the bodies of eight women, all of whom had an involvement with drugs or prostitution, were found in swamps and canals surrounding Jennings, Louisiana. Most of the bodies were found in such a state of decomposition as to make the actual cause of death difficult to determine. Most of the victims knew each other well. Some were related by blood or lived together. The victims also shared in common traits such as poverty, mental illness, and histories of drug abuse and prostitution. The women all also served as informants for the police about the local drug trade and often provided police with information about other Jeff Davis 8 victims before their own deaths. Task Force investigative reports reveal a series of witness interviews in which local law enforcement were implicated in the murders. Statements from two female inmates portrayed suspects working with the sheriff's office to dispose of evidence. However, the sergeant who took the statements was forced out of his job, and the allegations were ignored by law enforcement. Sheriff's Office Chief Criminal Investigator, Warren Gary, was also accused of purchasing a truck suspected of being used to transport a body for the purpose of discarding evidence. While the police arrested or issued warrants for the arrest of four people, none were convicted. During the years of 1992 and 1993, three prostitutes in the Portuguese capital Lisbon were found gruesomely murdered. The first victim, of alias Tina, 22, was found strangled and disemboweled and with mutilated genitals. The second victim Maria Fernanda, again strangled and disemboweled. The last identified victim was found 100m from the place of the first victim, again strangled and disemboweled but in this case all the organs were removed, lungs, vagina, heart, liver. No evidence related to the killer was found in any of the crime sites. All the blood, a lot of it, belonged to the victim.
A coroner office stated that all the victims were alive during the disembowelment but unconscious due to strangling and blunt force trauma to the head. Later, in New Bedford, the FBI suspected some murders were possibly connected to this case since the largest Portuguese community in U.S. is there but found it difficult to establish the connection. Between 1993 and 1997, similar crimes occurred in Netherlands, Czech Republic, Denmark and Belgium and the European authorities suspect he might have become a long-distance truck driver. In 2011, a certain Jose Gages confessed to the crimes but was revealed to be a bad joke or hoax for fame. This person remains under custody due to the suspected killing of another person. In Poland, seven homosexual men were found dead in the largest unexplained murder series in the history of Polish forensics. They all died in their own flats and right after or during sexual intercourse. The perpetrator stole, among other things, TVs, videos, jewelry, cash and other items from the apartments of the murdered men. The victims died by strangling, stabbing or being beaten to death. The murders were not planned because the instruments of the crime were objects from the victims' flats. At the turn of the 80s and 90s in the larger cities, Polish homosexuals would cruise around looking for new social contacts. It was at these places, mainly at the train station, that in most cases the victims were seen for the last time. At that time, a young man was seen in their company. The investigation into the murders was difficult because the environment of homosexuals in Lodz was hermetic. Criminologists suspected that the perpetrator hated his sexual orientation or was hurt by a homosexual. The murderer was seen several times when he left the victim's apartments, and facial composites were created. The man was over 20 years of age and was blonde, with a stocky build. The police did not find the murderer. Investigators suspect that he is dead. This is due to the fact that the witness who had contact with the mysterious Roman died of AIDS a few months later. It is possible that the murderer was also infected and died shortly afterwards, which could explain the sudden cessation of the murder series. Ten corpses, including at least six known female prostitutes whose bodies, some dismembered, were discovered on the south shore of Long Island, New York, between December 2010 and April 2011. The murders are believed to be the work of the still unidentified Long Island serial killer, also referred to by media sources as the Gilgo Killer, who may have started killing nearly 20 years ago based on forensic analysis of the victims' bodies. The killer killed six young, white, female prostitutes on Long Island. New York, and four other unidentified victims, including a female toddler and a young Asian male, believed to be a sex worker. After establishing contact with his victims on Craigslist, he met them on his own terms, killed them, and then transported their bodies for disposal along Ocean Parkway on Long Island. There has been much speculation in the media concerning the identity of the killer, currently known as unsub, unknown subject. It has been suggested that the serial killer is most likely a white male in his mid-twenties to mid-forties who is very familiar with the south shore of Long Island and has access to burlap sacks, which he uses to contain the bodies. He may have a detailed knowledge of law enforcement techniques, and perhaps even ties to law enforcement, which have thus far helped him avoid detection.